Well, hello, everybody. This is Dr. David Jockers, and today I am talking about candida overgrowth, the best home and lab tests. So best ways to really be able to test at your home, as well as doing more advanced lab tests. In fact, some of those tests you can just order and do right at your home as well. Uh, in fact, really every one of the tests that I'm going to recommend is actually a, a test you can do at home. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, but some are free and some are not. And so we'll go through all of that in detail and really cover what candida is in general. And so when we look at the health of our gut and the health of our immune system, we know that the gut lining, which is kind of that center bar there and that little brown dot in, in there is the nuclei of the cells in our intestinal lining. And it's literally one cell and there's this tight junction between the cells that help keep it together, okay? And so when we have got a healthy and rich bacterial community, then we're gonna have a really healthy immune response. In fact, there's something called the gastro, uh, or the GALT, which is um, the gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue, which helps form 70 to 80% of the body's immune response. And so when we've got good bacteria, good microbes, I should say, uh, even candida can be a healthy part of the gut microbiome. When it's in normal balance, we get really good regul regulatory T cells, which help basically modulate the immune system so it's coordinated, so it's not over uh, causing too much inflammation, for example, in the body or attacking our own cells, creating autoimmunity. Also, we develop IgA, and secretory IgA is an immune component that sits in the mucous membranes, such as in the gut, in the lungs, in the sinuses, and it helps to regulate and keep bad bacteria, uh, bad, you know, an overgrowth of yeast or parasites. It helps kill those things. It helps tell the body, okay, we need to hunt and, and regulate these things and keeps them in order. And so it helps to promote this rich and balanced bacterial community. So it all works together. However, if we're eating a bad diet, we're stressed, we are exposed to environmental toxins, then we're gonna end up with a poor and unbalanced bacterial community. And also on top of that, an overgrowth in yeast. And I'll talk about how people get an overgrowth in yeast. And then that's gonna cause this downregulation of regulatory T cells and secretory IgA, which is gonna promote more autoimmune activity and chronic inflammatory type issues like allergies or asthma, um, you know, and, and different conditions like that chronic inflammation that can affect our blood vessels, you know, leading to heart disease, our joints leading to joint pain and degeneration and, and, and things like that. So let's kind of jump more into candida now. And so we know that candida is always present inside of our body. However, it only becomes a problem when it overgrows. And I'll talk about why it overgrows, but made the, the major symptoms that you may have a candida overgrowth would be mental impairment and fatigue. And one of the main reasons is because candida secretes two major toxins, acetylaldehyde as well as gliotoxin. And acetylaldehyde is kind of like alcohol poisoning and it absolutely damages neurons in our brain as well as, uh, as well as overloading our liver. And gliotoxins, we have these glial cells, which are really the immune slash lymph system of the brain. And gliotoxins are literally toxins that destroy uh, the glymphatic system. And they're gonna cause a lot more chronic inflammation in the brain. So it can be really, really problematic. Also multiple food sensitivities because candida, these sorts of toxins, um, basically, again, they downregulate those regulatory T cells. And so our body ends up with chronic inflammation. We end up developing higher levels of sensitivities to different foods. And we, we end up with poor digestion. So food particles are crossing into the bloodstream, causing problems. Uh, heavy liver burden. I'm going to go into that in more detail. Absolutely can cause things like itchy and dry skin and eczema. And that basically is a form of inflammation in the skin. And there's a gut skin connection. So when the gut is damaged, it's going to affect the skin. A lot of people will develop things like thrush, uh, where they've got white, a white tongue, bad breath, and that's a sign of an outward kind of manifestation of candida coming out in that area. And then vaginal or foot or yeast infections. Now, you don't have to have like this kind of outward sign, okay, I've got 
athlete's foot or a white tongue in order to have a candida overgrowth. I see it very commonly. I would say, you know, when I'm looking at lab tests, it's like 90% of the people have uh, a level of candida overgrowth in their system. And why is that? Because in our society, here's all the reasons. Number one, prolonged use of antibiotics. You know, most people I talk to have been on more than one round of antibiotics during the course of their life. And they didn't have like a a program to follow to help restore their microbiome afterwards. It was just, they got an infection, they took an antibiotic and that was it. And there was no program as far as nutrition, lifestyle, supplements to help restore their microbiome. And when we do that, antibiotics do not kill yeast, they kill bacteria. And so candida and yeast in general compete with bacteria. So if you're gonna kill the bacteria, now the yeast is going to have open nutrition sp spots. They're gonna be able to eat more and, and really breed and grow and um, kind of dominate the microbiome. Also other toxins like cigarette smoke, uh, mercury filling. So if we're being exposed to mercury, then uh, candida loves mercury and mercury is going to basically help create an environment that reduces our immune system. So it's gonna put stress on the immune system. And if the immune system is weak, like that secretory IgA component in, in the mucous membranes, and that's gonna give an opportunity for candida and other things like parasites and, and, and bad bacteria to overgrow. Use of antacids, corticosteroids, hormone replacement therapy, and contraceptive pills. So, you know, that's gonna be things like birth control, obviously, um, synthetic estrogen, antacids, these are really common. So those are, you know, basically acid reflux types of medications. Um, corticosteroids are very, very common. All these things reduce your immune component and therefore increase the uh, virulence of candida, give it an upper hand. Loss of good bacteria in the gut. And that can be from things like chlor, I have it over here, chlorinated, fluorinated drinking water. So when we drink chlorine, chlorine is a disinfectant. So it disinfects the water, but it also disinfects our gut when we drink it. So it kills bad bacteria. And then again, it doesn't affect candida, so it can grow. Uh, it can be sexually transmitted. You know, if you've got it in your, um, you know, in your sexual areas, it definitely could be sexually transmitted. Obviously, you know, diet plays a huge role. So for eating a lot of processed carbohydrates, that is the preferred fuel for something like candida. Bad bacteria don't, or I'm sorry, good bacteria really don't get the fuel they need from those kinds of foods. They like high quality plant fiber. Um, fasting, believe it or not, is really good for good bacteria. Whereas we're eating the sugars, we're, we're eating a lot. Like if we're constantly snacking, <clears throat> things like that, all that helps helps with candida and bad microbe, microbial overgrowth, chronic stress, lack of sleep. So all those types of things. And here's, you know, all the different symptoms that people may experience with candida overgrowth. And it's almost like every single symptom that you can imagine that's out there, you can experience with this. And so, um, you know, definitely important that we're, we're getting a, the, the, the handle on this. Now let's look at the liver. We talked about acetaldehyde. And so when we've got candida, it's going to excrete these toxins. And those toxins are going to burden the liver. The liver's got to really work hard to deactivate those toxins. And so that puts stress on the liver. When the liver's under stress, that's going to reduce our body's immune system. We talked about the T regulatory cells. We talked about secretory IgA. So therefore, we're not going to be able to produce those. And therefore, candida is going to, again, have this upper hand. It's not going to have much of a defense. It's going to continue to grow. Um, and it's also going to send signals to the brain too to crave more sugars, more carbohydrates, getting the fuel it needs to continue to grow and dominate the microbiome. So how do we test for this? Well, in the article that associates this video that you can see below it, um, I have a Candida questionnaire. And so that's, you know, the first thing you can do is certainly the Candida questionnaire is a very simple, easy thing you can do in just a few minutes. Second thing is a candida spit test, and I'll go over that in a second. And then best lab test for candida. You certainly don't need to get all of these, but this would be, you know, the most thorough way. Obviously, we'd be test doing all four of these tests it would be a very thorough way to look for candida. Um, so let's see, candida questionnaire results. 
Uh, you know, with this, there with men, there's a few few questions that are more pertaining to women, such as like vaginal discharge and things like that. So, for men, a score of eight or greater indicates that your health problems can be connected to candida. Score eleven or higher suggests your symptoms are very likely to be related to candida. And so you can see the difference with the women because again, there's a couple questions pertaining to them that don't pertain to the men. <clears throat> now, candida spit test. <clears throat> so. With this, what we basically want to do is we're going to take our morning spit, okay? We're going to spit, and I have all the directions in the article that pertains to this. And we're going to spit in the water, and we're going to watch it, okay? And your saliva should stay at the top in a cohesive blob, okay? If you see strings traveling down like this example A here uh, and the saliva floating on the top, that could indicate candida. If you see cloudy specks in there, or if the whole blob just sinks right to the bottom, then that would indicate that you more likely have candida. Again, it's not a definitive test, okay? But certainly um, certainly can help, help you understand if this is an issue. If it just sits, that blob just sits at the top, you really don't have it. It's not, it's not as, as serious an issue. Okay, now organic acids test. And so this is a test I run on a lot of people. And you can see that first line of markers, yeast and fungal markers. Okay, and this person has the arabinose very high. And that's a very sensitive marker to a yeast overgrowth that's impacting and into the bloodstream. So it's in the bloodstream here. And these are metabolites from our, uh, our, our, our body's natural metabolic system that are ending up into the urine. So it's a urine test that you do at home. And a lot of times I'll see many of these markers, the three oxoglutaric, I'll see tartaric acid. I'll see a lot of these markers high commonly. Okay. And then this is also going to test for bacteria, clostridia. It's going to test for a lot of different markers. And this is just the first page. It also tests for uh, certain micronutrients, B vitamins, different things like that. It looks at stress hormones. Um, it looks at glutathione and mitochondrial markers. So it looks at a lot of different components. And what's interesting about this test is oftentimes I'll see when people have elevated yeast and fungal markers, they also have a lot of imbalances in their mitochondrial energy systems. And the reason why is because they're being poisoned by these fungal markers. It's affecting their body's ability to produce energy through the mitochondria. And uh, obviously that's going to dramatically affect their quality of life and cause a lot of different symptoms in their body. And so another test that I look at is a GI map stool analysis. And again, this is just one page of it, but you can also see here, this is looking at opportunistic bacteria, different um, bacteria that are associated with autoimmune conditions. It's also looking at different fungi and yeast. As you can see, there are five different types of fungi and yeast. Now, I will tell you, stool analysis is not the best way to look at yeast, okay? Organic acid is definitely much, much more sensitive to it, um, and I find that the GI map misses it a lot, okay? But however, I, I really love the GI map because it's really good for looking at ba certain bacteria, parasites, you know, things that you're not going to really be able to see off the organic acid. Um, as you can also see here, viruses, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr, it's going to look at your secretory IgA, that, that immune component of the gut that I was talking about. It's going to measure that out. Just looks at a, a, a wide variety of things that I think are very valuable. However, it's again, not the best marker for yeast overgrowth. However, if you do see it in there, you know you've got a yeast overgrowth. Okay, so uh, another test is the Great Plains Lab Stool Analysis. And I, I see that this will pick up yeast overgrowth, but again, not as sensitive as the organic acid. An example here, this person has Klebsiella overgrowth, uh, which is a bad bacteria. Okay, and so, um, and then you've also got, this person's also got a yeast overgrowth here with uh, two different types of yeast. And so the interesting thing with this also, this test is it will actually look and test different antimicrobials against these bacteria, the opportunistic bacteria and the yeast. And it will say, okay, grapefruit seed extract is very, this, this um, candida, the candida cruci is very sensitive to the grapefruit seed extract. So that would be a good supplement to use. It's very sensitive to berberine. Very, that would be a good one to use. It's not sensitive to oregano. 
So that wouldn't be a good one to use. It'll, it'll look at things like that and really test that particular strain. So that is another very, you know, highly, obviously very highly advantageous um, way to look at it. And so again, though, it's not as sensitive overall to picking up yeast, but if it does pick up the yeast, you know you have it, number one. Number two, it's gonna look at what the best antimicrobials are. You know, unfortunately there's no perfect test. I wish there was uh, definitely no perfect test uh, that's out there. Now, the good thing is, all, again, all these tests that I've showed you guys, you can do at home. This right here is a food sensitivity. It's a dried blood IgG. So this is a blood test, but it's basically one you do at home. You do a finger prick and it's going to look at how your immune system is reacting to yeast. And if we see really high reaction, particularly to candida albicans, as you can see with this individual, okay, um, that's a sign that the immune system has been activated towards that. So at some point we've had leaky gut with overgrowth of candida and uh, that would be cause a problem. Now you can also look at in general at this person's reactivity summary and you can see they have a ton of, a, a ton of, uh, food sensitivities. Okay. And that would be, that would tell me this person really has leaky gut because they're reacting to almost everything. And so that person is uh, very compromised in their GI system. And that's the advantage of a test like this where you can really um, be able to see stuff like that, looking at IgG, which is a delayed immune component, but it's an, a true antibody uh, that it's looking at. And again, this is a test you can do at home without a blood draw, just a finger prick. So um, this is also very sensitive to candida, a systemic candida infection, similar to organic acid test as well. Okay. So Hopefully this has been, you know, really helpful for you guys. And then, you know, today's video is not really about beating candida. Okay. I've got other videos and articles on that, but in general, if we're going to beat candida, you know, number one, we need nutrition that starves candida. We know candida loves sugar and carbs. So we would reduce those. So it'd be more of a ketogenic style approach and probably adding in some fasting protocols as well, adding in antimicrobial support, so different herbs that can help uh, kill candida. And I'll do a future video on that. We're going to help improve liver function. So we're going to do different things to help support the liver. Because remember, the liver is really burdened by the toxins, the acetylaldehyde, the gliotoxin that are produced by candida. We want to strengthen the immune system, that IgA component. We need to help support that. And then we need to restore, strengthen that gut lining. And so we need different components to help with that, that process and create tighter junctions there. So again, hopefully this is a helpful video for you guys. And if you have questions, certainly leave a comment below and I'll see you on a future training. Bless you guys.